We're here with Ellen Latham, who's the founder of Orange Theory Fitness, which is a global fitness brand and product and audience, and you have almost a million members. So I'm thrilled to be talking with you about you. being a female entrepreneur, what that has taken in your life to get you to this point as a mother, balancing all of life and its many um, you know, necessary buckets that you have to tend to. So tell us a little bit about how you got here. What was your background? So I've been in the fitness industry for over 40 years. I have a bachelor's degree in physical education, a master's degree in exercise physiology. So I've literally been teaching group fitness from the Jane Fonda Lake warmer days. I oh believe I goodness. may have a few sets in my drawer at home. <laughs> Um, and it's just my passion and my love. Yeah. And it's interesting too that I think those initial passions and love, we sometimes are told that they're not a job opportunity in the real world, but they end up eking their way out into, you know, we can't always ignore these passions. And so, you know, what was that turning point for you? How did you take that passion from your youth and your childhood and then make it into what you pursued? Um, yeah, I was very fortunate. My father was a phys ed teacher and football coach at my local high school. And I remember going to him and uh, I was graduating from high school. And I was like, now, what do I do? What do I want to be, Dad? This type of thing. I got to go, you know, to college. And he said, I'm just going to give you a piece of advice. You have to be passionate about it. You have to love it. You'll put a lot of hours into it. Um, you will make money from it. You will be successful in it eventually. I wish he was here. Um, but, but because of that, you'll always have a fire lit inside of you so best advice I ever got and then I just you know pursued uh, fitness working in different fitness sectors I grew up in upstate New York Niagara Falls Buffalo moved to Florida because we knew better opportunities in the fitness world and um, then what happened was I was 40 years old I was a single parent of a nine-year-old son I lived in Fort Lauderdale. My job was in Miami, and it was the ideal job. I was 40. I had finally gotten to a point where I went, wow, for someone with the kind of the schooling I have, the experience I have, I'm managing a high-end fitness spa in Miami where all the glamorous people go, and isn't this fantastic? And I got in the car and went to work that day, and my boss called me into his office, and he told me, Ellen, we have to let you go today. And I was devastated. And I don't remember driving home that day. I was, it, it, you know that pit in the stomach type of feeling when something, you know, really traumatic happens in your yes. life? That's exactly, you know, what took place. It was the lowest point in my life. And I often, you know, laugh because I say that was the lowest point in my life. And then last year, my highest point in my life was at age 60, when uh, Forbes magazine listed my company as the number one woman-led fitness franchise in the nation. Wow. I mean, it's incredible. And I relate to that pit in your stomach because I lived that experience as well. And even though I was in my earlier 20s, or I should say mid-20s, I had achieved a certain level, uh, worked for, and came in one day and all of a sudden that rug was ripped out from underneath me and my husband and I had just been married a few months before. And so you think that you've reached some sort of stability right. and you've worked hard and put in the hours and then all of a sudden, whoosh, bye, it's ripped out from underneath you. But the most beautiful things I think come from that space, if you don't, you know, fall victim to the shame yeah. of it. And I think that's something that I want, I would love to hear for our viewers and our readers is, you know, what is that place and how can you tap into that place to really create the most beautiful life journey? Yeah. I, well, I talk about my father just because he was such a wonderful mentor to me and what he did because he was a coach. Uh, he was very much in the belief of focusing on what you have, not what you don't have. And he taught us that as children and uh, thank goodness. And during that time, he reminded me of, okay, this is what you don't have, a job and uh, you know financial stability, but what do you have? And and you have uh, many years of being a fantastic group fitness instructor. You, I had a Pilates certification. I had some know-how of managing facilities, this type of thing. So what I did right out of that is focus on those things because otherwise you will go into that yes. pit and you know you wouldn't find me uh, for days coming out from under the covers with 
volumes of Hagen Dots. Yeah. And uh, so I just really thought about that. And you listen, the pit in your stomach's still there. It's yes. not like everything goes away because this is traumatic. But I started teaching group fitness at a local gold's gym down the street. I started, I had a Pilates certification, so I started soliciting those members who were taking those classes with me to do one-on-one -on -one Pilates with me in my home, mm -hmm. in a spare room. And I literally kept building that up until I had a pretty good flow of people coming to my home. And that was when I decided to make the move of borrowing a little money and moving to a little hundred, I mean, thousand square foot space and started a little Pilates studio. So when people ask women, whoever, what, when you have something very traumatic that happens mm -hmm. to you, you know, how do you get through it? I know for me, that focus on what I had was major, but also you have to have support. I was very lucky to have my sister who were very close in age. So she was there helping and supporting me. Uh, she's got three boys around the age of my son. So that helped with all of that. And then my fiance and they believed in me and they supported me. And I think the most important thing I got out of having the right people around you supporting you is they recognize when you're struggling. Mm -hmm. They recognize when you're working below your potential and they recognize when you're kind of using defeating language. So those three things, those two people didn't let me, you know, get one yeah. inch away with. You, don't give me that. You could perform better than that. Go out and do whatever. Or I don't want to hear that language of that, you know, you can't do this or that you're struggling. So, so important advice wise is to surround yourself with people who are going to notice when you're struggling, Notice if you're working under your potential and notice if you're kind of using a lot of defeating language and turn that around. And speaking of the defeating language, some of those words were keywords to me about fitness coaching and how you have built a global brand around being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to be said for that. And especially for some of the younger viewers out there that we, you know, our generation sometimes can think that things can come easily and right. they're overnight success. And I think that the most amount of beauty in the process is to learn how to be very uncomfortable and be fine with that and know that it's going to yield to something beautiful down the road. Absolutely. So we have in our workout base push it all out. So base is your standard aerobic conditioning that the human heart has. You will not get better in base. Push is you're uncomfortable. We never do it more than three minutes in the workout, but you're uncomfortable. And then the whole physiology and science of the workout is you come back from push. I'm uncomfortable, Ellen, back to the base and you end up elevating your base. It's the same in life. Mm -hmm. If you just go through life and you're just existing and it's like, okay, this is my base of life and you don't push yourself to get into some uncomfortable situations or as happened to us, they just arise and you don't realize that push can elevate your base if used in the right way, you're missing a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did and I did not miss the opportunity. Obviously that's what you did. <laughs> Well, it takes, you know, it, it takes willpower and strength to not let those external factors kind of determine your own fate. And speaking of determining your own fate, if you could go back and tell your younger self one or two things about what it means to really create a legacy, you know, what advice would you give her? There's three things. There's three things that I think about all the time. There's three things I mentor women in business, young women, they things I remind them constantly, and they are number one, you have to believe in your potential. You have to believe that you were put on this earth as a human being to with grandiose potential, and you just have to. He made us feel very interestingly that he makes us go figure it out. That go believe in your potential, and if you don't, you may be just stay where you are, but if you do, mighty things can happen. Number two is you have to believe you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Especially with women, a lot of times yes. there's an undeserving type of mentality that goes on. That we want to stay small instead of big. And I don't mean that in size, I mean that in spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have to believe you deserve it. And then my mantra, number three, is why not me? 
So you have to sit in, and you have to put little post-its all inside your car <laughs> and in your bathroom mirrors and all those else that say, why not me? And so believe in your potential, believe that you deserve it, and then keep telling yourself every day, day after day, why not me? Thank you so much. That's so inspirational. I can't wait to share this with everybody. <laughs>